Once you have your ESP32 connected to Wi-Fi, you can send data to external services to keep track of them. In this video, I will show you how to use ThingSpeak. Now, in a nutshell, ThingSpeak allows you to send data to their cloud. They'll store it and they visualize it for you in this handy dashboard. Here's an example of a sensor that I was working on that frequently uploads the value of some IR sensors. And what's cool is that ThingSpeak automatically generates these graphs to visualize your data over time. Pretty cool, right? Now, on top of that, ThingSpeak is free if you send less than 3 million messages per year. That's about 8,200 messages per day. That should be more than sufficient for DIY projects. Now, to get started, you will need to sign up for a free ThingSpeak account. And here, I'm obviously already logged into mine. ThingSpeak is organized in a very simple way. You can create channels that contain data fields. A simple example, if you're building a temperature sensor, you probably want to create one channel for your device with two fields, a temperature field and a humidity field. Now to create a channel, you can go to channels, my channel, and then click on new channel. I'll call mine test channel, and I will define two fields. One for a simple counter, just to demonstrate how ThingSpeak works and how it visualizes data. And then I will create another one to, let's say, keep track of the Wi-Fi signal strength. Now you can fill in the other details as well, but that's not required. Those are mostly there for when you want to share your channel to the public. When you're done, click on save channel. Now ThingSpeak automatically shows you the dashboard of your channel with a graph for each of the fields that we just defined. That is counter and Wi-Fi signal. So now we're ready to push data to ThingSpeak and you can do this in two ways. You can make HTTP calls or you can use their MQTT broker. The easiest one is by using HTTP calls, but you don't need to make these yourself. We can use the ThingSpeak Arduino client. So I'll switch to Visual Studio Code and I open up the details of this library so you can see the ThingSpeak library created by MathWorks themselves. It's compatible with any Arduino board, provided that you have a Wi-Fi extension, and it's also compatible with the ESP8266 and the ESP32. Now to install this library, I will go to my platformio.ini file, I will create a new section called libdeps, and I will add ThingSpeak right here. The library manager is something that was mentioned in the previous videos, but in a nutshell, Platform.io will take care of downloading and installing this library for us. Now let's write some code. In the main.cpp file, I already added code to connect to a Wi-Fi network. I also made a video about this one, so if you haven't seen it, go check it out. But back to ThingSpeak. There are two things that I want to push. A simple counter, just to demonstrate, and the current Wi-Fi signal strength. Let's start by importing the ThingSpeak library. So I will say include thingspeak.h. Next, I will define two constants, one for the channel ID and one for the channel API key. And you can find these on the ThingSpeak website. So if I go back to Safari and I scroll up, here at the top of your page, of your details page, you can find your channel ID. So simply copy that and paste it into channel ID. To find your API key, go back to ThingSpeak, go to API keys, and you'll have two API keys. You have a write API key and a read API key. We obviously need to use the write API key. So I'm gonna copy this one and paste it in here. Now we'll also create an instance of Wi-Fi client, which I will call client. This will be used by the ThingSpeak library to make HTTP requests. Now finally, I will also create a counter and initialize it to zero. Now let's move on to the setup function. Here I already have some code to initialize the serial and to connect to Wi-Fi. We obviously need to have a Wi-Fi connection because otherwise we cannot push data to ThingSpeak. The only thing that's left to do in the setup function is to call thingspeak.begin. And this function expects one parameter. It expects an instance of Wi-Fi client, which we have defined at the top of our file and we've called it client. And that's all we have to do to initialize the ThingSpeak library. 
Now we're ready to send some actual data and we'll do that in the loop function. I'll start by incrementing the counter. So I'll say counter plus plus. Then we can use the write field method of the thingspeak library to send some data. So I will say thingspeak dot write fields. And this one expects four parameters. The ID of the channel where you want to push data to, which we have defined in our constant channel ID. The field number to which you want to push a value. We want to push the counter to field number one. So I will say number one. Then the value that you want to push. So we want to push our counter. And finally, your channel's API key, which we have defined in channel underscore API key. The last step is to add a delay of 15 seconds to our loop function because the free tier of ThingSpeak only allows one new data point every 15 seconds. So we'll say delay 15,000. Let's save the file and let's flash it to our board to see if it works. So once the flashing is done, you can see that the board is connecting to Wi-Fi, it's connected and it's connected with this particular IP address. Now, if I go back to ThingSpeak and I go to my private view of my channel, you can see the value of our counter is being incremented. So it started at counter one, then it was counter two. And if we wait another 15 seconds, you will see another data point being added to this graph. There we go, counter equals three. So that's pretty cool. But let's now push the Wi-Fi signal strength to ThingSpeak as well. Now to do that, you could just copy and paste this line and write something to field number two. But that would not be very efficient because the write field method makes an HTTP request for each field you want to submit. So if you copy and paste this line, you would make two calls. Instead, you can also update all of your fields in one go. So to do that, I will replace write field by set field. And this method only accepts two parameters, the field number and the value for the field. So I'll remove channel ID and I will remove the channel API key. Now I can also push field number two. So I will copy and paste this line and I will say that field number two has to be my Wi-Fi signal strength, which we can get by calling Wi-Fi.RSSI. You can repeat this for all of the fields in your channel. And once you're done, you have to send them through to ThingSpeak. And you can do that by calling thingspeak.writefields. This method expects two parameters, the channel ID and the API key. So I will say channel ID and channel API key. Now this is much more efficient because again, you can update all of the fields of your channel in one go with one single HTTP request. So let's save the file. Let's flash it to our board and see if this works as well. All right, the flashing is done. You can see again, the board has connected to Wi-Fi. So let's go to ThingSpeak and let's hit refresh to see what has happened. And you can see that yes, the counter has been reset to value one. And you can also see that it started reporting its Wi-Fi signal strength. Now, one side note, the ThingSpeak library also allows you to download your readings back to the ESP32. This could be handy if you wanted to retrieve the previous state, for example, but that's for another video. Now, as you can see, ThingSpeak is an amazing tool for quickly capturing and analyzing data from your IoT projects. I've been using it a lot during testing phases because it's easy to use and because it immediately visualizes your data over time. Check out the rest of the series if you want to learn more about ESP32 programming and thanks for watching.